Hey everyone, thanks for joining here with Jeremy. I wanna introduce what we're gonna be doing on a kind of weekly, bi-weekly basis. Today, we're gonna to learn more about Jeremy, his background, but going forward, we're gonna definitely be covering the company, you know, recent news as it comes out, the industry, and we definitely want it to be interactive. If anyone watching has some questions or things you wanna see in future videos, please drop it below. And we'll definitely get it in here. But Jeremy, first things first, how are you? I'm doing well, Jason. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, good, awesome, awesome. Well, here, Kind of said, uh, we're going to be doing your background. Uh, usually like to kick it off uh, kind of right, right out of school or where you even went to school, first couple of jobs, you know, what you were doing before joining the company. Uh, pick where you want to start and we'll go from there. Yeah, certainly. So uh, I guess I'll start. Uh, I did grad school, my MBA uh, in Barcelona, Spain at a, at a business school there called ESADE. Uh, and as a Midwest kid who grew up in Western Michigan, uh, it was an interesting experience to uh, really, actually, I, so I moved to Barcelona with two suitcases, nowhere to stay, didn't speak the language, only had an appointment to, to show up at school, and it was uh, far and away one of the best decisions I ever made to immerse myself in a new culture. Uh, and a lot of people ask me why I chose that program, and it really checked all the boxes for me. So it was, at the time, it was the number one uh, ranked international MBA program by the Wall Street Journal. So I had a great brand recognition along with it. But more importantly uh, for me, the program delivered everything I was looking for in an in a educa postgraduate education experience like that. So... Uh, it was very case-based, so really practical, uh, very international. I, I happen to be the only American in the program out of a little over 100 uh, students, and we were represented by 24 different nationalities. So uh, really, uh, you know, diverse backgrounds, interesting experiences, cultures, all of the above. And to make sure we maximize that diversity, it was very team-based. So you... Uh, did effectively your whole entire first semester with the same five students on your team. And I had five different nationalities represented. Uh, very interesting background, very interesting learning experience, especially uh, for those who have been through it, through the rigor of uh, your first semester in, in an MBA program. So really, really interesting experience. Uh, and then on top of that, as a finance guy by by trade, I guess it was good to uh, get in a, a school that was a little more well known for its marketing prowess. Uh, so, uh, you know, with all that combined, it was a great experience for me. And, uh, you know, Barcelona is a pretty, pretty great place to be living uh, as a student, a very cosmopolitan city. You've got, uh, you know, great, great culture, the beach beach there and, and lots to do and see and experience. And it was a great hub uh, to travel around Europe for me. So uh, awesome experience there. Uh, and then coming out of Esade, I uh, decided to move back to Michigan. Uh, so really, uh, I was very fortunate that I knew I wanted to take the finance path, but also really work in life sciences, healthcare since the beginning. Uh, you know, it was a booming industry in Grand Rapids where I'm from and in West Michigan more broadly. And as somebody who was coming out really in the, in the thick of the, or at the, kind of the beginning thick of the financial crisis uh, back then, it was interesting to see the way Stryker was performing. So, uh, you know, a company that had, I think at the time, you know, 20 plus years of consecutive uh, revenue growth, uh, a long, long history of 20% earnings growth, despite booms and busts and, and everything that was going on, a serial acquirer. Uh, so really looked at that organization with a lot of respect and admiration. Uh, so jumped at the opportunity to, to join them uh, in an internal audit role uh, is, is how I started out within Stryker. And one of the, the reasons that drew me to that was, uh, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to learn, you know, medical devices inside and out and a role like that in an organization like Stryker that was fiercely decentralized gave me the opportunity to see the way it was done in different businesses, different customer segments, different geographies. Uh, you know, so I think in, in those early days, in the first few years with Stryker, I had visited, 
you know, offices in, in more than 30 different countries and seeing the healthcare system and the dynamics in, you know, single payer environments, public slash private environments, uh, you know, direct sales forces, indirect sales forces, lots of M&A integration opportunities. Uh, and that really, uh, that experience, in addition to building, you know, a significant network around the organization, was kind of a springboard for, uh, you know, the, the future opportunities with the organization. So, uh, you know, the, being a, a growth company was continuing. I think, you know, in those early days, the mantra was we would have nothing less than uh, double-digit revenue growth every year. And we continue to deliver on that, you know, organically for the most part back then. Uh, so being in an organization that's growing that quickly and, uh, and on top of that, that well established, I was able to get really significant stretch roles very early in my career. Uh, and particularly the international organization, uh, you know, was, was ripe for, for some support from my kind of background. So uh, ended up moving to a couple different European businesses. So I was based in, in Montreux, Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, for some time supporting the international business, again, kind of standardizing and implementing best practices for, uh, you, know, H, you know, interactions with healthcare professional, compliance activities, integration of these new businesses that we were acquiring, you know, different business models, whether it was, you know, geographic-based versus product-based, so lots of really interesting kind of internal management consulting kind of opportunities in that role for uh, what at the time was dubbed the international group. So, you know, about a $2 billion business of, you know, strikers distribution outside of the U.S. Uh, and then uh, moved to their U.K. office, uh, really supporting uh, financial, um, you know, business process outsourcing, finance transformation, and, and really helping the organization do finance better. Uh, and then with that experience, uh, jumped to my next uh, location, which was Johannesburg, South Africa, which was really my uh, first executive level role with the organization. So I was on the ex-co of their sub-Saharan African business, uh, which was a pretty small business, but lots of very interesting uh, things to wrestle with down there. You know, it's, uh, especially South Africa, which was our largest market uh, at the time, you know, over 80% of healthcare spending in South Africa was spent on about 12% of the population. So very interesting uh, problems with getting access to the broader population, working with particularly public uh, um, provider institutions, um, uh, implementing supply chain procurement initiatives to really help them uh, really elevate their their customer profile, I guess I'd say, for these multinational companies that were trying to do business there. They, you know, it was a deep partnership with the Ministry of Health and, you know, Gauteng, where Johannesburg is, and lots of uh, really big initiatives to kind of make them more, much more attractive to a multinational business. There was, uh, you know, significant working capital needs to support their business, lots, you know, AR, AR outstanding for several years, so really just working through some of those things with the with the institutions to do that, which became a catalyst for them providing service to more customers. So it, it wasn't necessarily a, a financing need; it was more of a logistical and operations need. So I got to work with, with some really interesting projects down there, and we were also supporting you know the other geographies as well. So. Uh, had some interesting, you know, growing businesses in places like uh, Tanzania, you know, Rwanda, Namibia, all of those areas. So, uh, great kind of soup to nuts exco experience in a in a small geography for a multinational organization. So, yeah, holy, uh, you know, <laughs> Mr. Travel everywhere. That's crazy. Uh, what was your favorite place? Just have to ask. Yeah, I get that question a lot. Um, <laughs> You know, it's 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 hard to say. Okay, I pick I, two. Pick two. Okay, definitely. So, favorite place to visit, I, I would say, was Tokyo. I really, uh, you know, just the the stark contrast from Western culture was really interesting for me. And uh, you know, perform working there with with that organization. Obviously, it's a great uh, medical device market, Japan. So, working there with that organization was 
it was really uh, eye-opening experience and uh, really loved the, the culture and, and work ethic and, and what they did yeah. uh, and some of their, their different approaches. And favorite place to live, you know, I, I definitely would say Barcelona. Now it's a little bit biased because it was, I was, it was as a student and my experience was uh, much different than other places. But, uh, you know, that's, I didn't have a bad experience in any of those geographies for sure. Yeah, no, awesome. And, uh, you know, maybe a, a little bit of a tangent, but, uh, you know, I see questions all the time and, you know, a lot of people love to ask, uh, you know, what, what would you kind of throw some of that early career success? Was it because you were willing to travel? You know, you're ambitious, you're in a company that was growing. So like you said, you get a lot of opportunities just quick. Uh, you know, maybe if you want to speak on that for kind of 20 seconds. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, you know, I think uh, having a, a good mentor and a good sponsor for your career is invaluable. So that was that was a lot of help. But also, uh, you know, just raising your hand to take on big, hairy, meaty problems uh, mm-hmm. that exist in the organization. You know, they're uh, uh, just, you know, I'll give you a, a simple anecdote on, on the South Africa experience. You know, I went to the CFO at the time and said, listen, I, you know, I'm really good at uh, processes and internal controls, given, given my background. I'm happy to fly down there for a project and, and help them implement some things. And, uh, you know, it'll be, you know, kind of sustainable because we'll put the, the foundation in place. And uh, his response was, no, if somebody's going to go down there, they're not going down there for a couple of months. So how would you like to be the finance leader for the Sub-Saharan African business? And, <laughs> uh, you know, the rest was history, which was far, you know, at that time was definitely my best learning, learning experience in my career. So just being willing to, to raise your hand, recognize a need that you can, that you can solve and raise your hand to go do it and, uh, and take it head on is what was great for me.